It was decided that the council to decide the heir of the old king would be held at Harrenhal, the largest castle in the realm, despite it being a ruin. No one knew how many lords would come, since no such council had ever been held before, but it was thought prudent to have room for at least 500 lords and their followers. More than a thousand lords attended, however. It took half a year for them to assemble together, and a few even arrived as the council was breaking up. Even Harrenhal could not contain the number of men in attendance, as each lord was accompanied by his retinue of knights, squires, grooms, cooks and serving men. Tymon Lannister, Lord of Casterly Rock, brought with him 300 men. Not to be outdone by him, Lord Mathos Tyrell of Highgarden brought 500. Lords came from every corner of Westeros, from the Dornish marches to the shadow of the wall in the north. The Evenstar of Tarth was there, and the Lord of the Lonely Light. From Winterfell came Lord Ellard Stark. From River Run, Lord Grover Tully. From the Vale, Yobert Royce, regent and protector for the young Jane Arryn, Lady of the Eyrie. Even the Dornish were represented, though not as part of the Seven Kingdoms at this point. The Prince of Dawn sent his daughter and twenty Dornish knights to Harrenhal to observe proceedings. The High Septon came from Old Town to bless the assembly. Merchants and tradesmen descended upon Harrenhal by the hundreds. Hedge knights and free riders came in hopes of finding work with their swords. Cut purses came seeking after coin. Old women and young girls came seeking after husbands. Thieves and whores, washwomen and camp followers, singers and mummers, they all came from east and west, north and south. A city of tents sprang outside the walls of Harrenhal, along the lake shore for leagues in each direction. For a time, Harrington, was the fourth city in the realm, with only Old Town, King's Landing, and Lannisport being larger. Fourteen claims were to be examined and considered by the lords assembled. From Essos came three rival grandsons of King Jaehaerys through his daughter Sarah, each sired by a different father. One was said to be the very image of Jaehaerys in his youth. Another, born to the Tyrarch of Old Volantis, arrived with bags of gold and a dwarf elephant. The lavish gifts he distributed among the poorer lords undoubtedly helped his claim. Princess Sarah herself was still alive and well in Volantis, and only 34 years of age. Her own claim was clearly superior to those of any of her bastard sons, but she did not choose to press it. Another contender for the throne produced sheaves of parchment that demonstrated his descent from Gaiman the Glorious, the greatest of the Targaryen lords of Dragonstone before the conquest by way of a younger daughter and the petty lord she had married, and so on for seven generations. There was also a strapping red-haired man-at-arms, who claimed to be the bastard son of Maegle the Cruel. By way of proof, he brought his mother, an old innkeep's daughter, who said that she had once been raped by Maegle. The lords were well prepared to believe the fact of rape, but not that the act had gotten her with child, given Maegle's well-noted troubled conceiving a child. The Great Council deliberated for 13 days. The tenuous claims of nine lesser competitors were all considered and discarded. Archmaester Vagon was ruled out on account of his vows, and Princess Rhaenys and her daughter on account of their gender, leaving two claimants with the most support. Viserys Targaryen, eldest son of Prince Balon and Princess Elissa, and Laenor Valerian, the son of Princess Rhaenys and grandson of Prince Aemon. Viserys was the old king's grandson, Laenor his great-grandson. The principle of primogeniture favoured Laenor, the principle of proximity, Viserys. Viserys had also been the last Targaryen to ride Balerion, though after the death of the Black Dread in 94 AC, he chose never to mount another dragon. Whereas the boy Laenor had yet to take flight upon his young dragon, a splendid grey and white beast he named Sea Smoke. But Viserys's claim derived from his father, Laenor's from his mother, and most lords felt the male line must take precedence over the female. Moreover, Viserys was a man of 24, Laenor a boy of 7. For all these reasons, Laenor's claim was generally regarded as weaker, but the boy's mother and father were such powerful and influential figures that it could not be dismissed entirely. Lord Corlys Valarian, the Sea Snake, was an ambitious man. During his nine voyages on the Sea Snake, he was forever wanting to press onwards, to go where none had gone before, and see what lay beyond maps. Although he had accomplished much, and more in life, he was seldom satisfied, the men who knew him best would say, and in Rhaenys Targaryen, daughter of the old king's eldest son and heir, he found his perfect match, a woman as spirited and beautiful and proud as any in the realm, and a dragon rider as well. His sons and daughters would soar through the skies, Lord Corlys expected, and one day, one of them would sit on the Iron Throne in the name of House Valarian. Unsurprisingly, 
The sea snake was bitterly disappointed when Prince Aemon died and King Jaehaerys bypassed Aemon's daughter Rhaenys in favour of his brother, Balon the Spring Prince. But now it seemed the wheel had once again turned and the wrong could be righted. Thus did Lord Corlys and his wife, Princess Rhaenys, arrive at Harrenhal in high state using the wealth and influence of House Valerian to persuade the lords assembled that their son Laenor should be recognised as heir to the Iron Throne. In these efforts they were joined by the Lord of Storm's End, Bormund Baratheon, great uncle to Rhaenys and great great uncle to the boy Laenor and also half brother of the king. He was joined by Lord Stark of Winterfell and his bannermen as well as Lord Blackwood of Raventree and Lord Bar Emon of Sharp Point and Lord Caltegar of Claw Isle among many others. But they were nowhere near enough. Lord and Lady Valarian were eloquent open-handed in their efforts on behalf of their son. The decision of the Great Council was never truly in doubt. By a heavily lopsided margin, the Lords Assembled chose Viserys Targaryen as the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Though the maesters who tallied the votes never revealed the actual number, it was said afterwards that the vote had been more than 20 to 1 in Viserys' favour. King Jaehaerys had not attended the council, but when word of the verdict reached him, his grace thanked the lords for their service and gratefully conferred the style of Prince of Dragonstone upon his grandson Viserys. Storm's End and Driftmark accepted the decision, if begrudgingly. The vote had been so overwhelming that Lainor's father and mother saw they could not hope to prevail. In the eyes of many, the Great Council of 101 AC thereby established an iron precedence on the matter of succession. Regardless of seniority, the Iron Throne of Westeros could not pass to a woman, nor through a woman, to her male descendants. Of the last years in the reign of King Jaehaerys Targaryen, the conciliator, the old king, little and less needed to be said. Prince Balon had served his father as Hand of the King, as well as Prince of Dragonstone, but after his death, Jaehaerys elected to divide those honours. As his new Hand, he called upon Sir Otto Hightower, younger brother to the Lord of the Hightower in Old Town. Sir Otto brought with him his wife and children to court, and served King Jaehaerys faithfully for the years remaining to him. As the old king's strength and wits began to fail, he was often confined to his bed. Sir Otto's precocious 15-year-old daughter, Alicent, became his constant companion fetching his meals, reading to him, helping him bathe and to dress himself. The old king sometimes mistook her for one of his daughters, calling her by their names. Near the end, he grew certain she was his daughter Sarah, returned to him from beyond the narrow sea in the year 103 AC. King Jaehaerys I Targaryen died in his bed as Lady Alicent was reading to him from Septon Bath's Unnatural History. Jaehaerys was 69 years of age and had reigned over the Seven Kingdoms since coming to the Iron Throne at the age of 14. His remains were burned in the Dragon Pit, his ashes interned with good Queen Alysanne's on Dragonstone. All of Westeros mourned, even in Dawn, where his rule had not extended. But as many will argue throughout Westeros, Jaehaerys the Conciliator and his good queen Alassane, perhaps the best rulers the Seven Kingdoms had ever seen.